we are on our way to just go run errands. Hey, running bye. errands, meaning. Finally took off the back of Jamie's booster seats. Um, why do I look so skinny? Blood. Look at my collarbone. My head is literally killing. <laughs> so I had to look up the guidelines again because JB is four foot five, but he weighs seventy four pounds. Um, they recommend, child, they recommend keeping kids in car seats to twelve. Jamie's gonna be big right then. I think the requirement is over. Is it over seventy or seventy two pounds and four foot nine? I have family members who should probably be in car seats then. If you gotta be four foot nine and over, that. So anyway, y'all, um, this Do morning, what is going on? This morning has been a bit of a, a bust for me. I wanted to get so much done and it's okay though. Cause I, I got a lot done during the week day and doing the um, week itself, <laughs> but I'll probably, you know, like I said, do some more organizing tomorrow. Now, I wanted to share something that happened with JB today, which is why I often hear me say it's really important as a parent to be mindful of what your child listens, hears, sees, all of that, especially in the times that we're in right now, okay? So, I let JB look at this big head girl on um, YouTube Snow. called Jessie V. Jessie V, I hope she's done watching this she ain't watching my channel child she got a big old head anyway so she's a lovely young lady but some of her content can be a little scary so jb apparently watched the video last night in another video today tell me why he would not go to the bathroom by himself now i will say to I go to our bathroom is to go to the bathroom is a dark hallway. And so he would, child, he was fit to be tired. He was not trying to walk down that hallway. So finally I told him, I said, look, we're not going anywhere until you brush your teeth. Go back in there and brush your teeth. He finally, I guess he finally went, oh, I told him to go back there with daddy. Cause daddy was, you know, my husband was walking back there to get ready. I hear my husband walk by there. And now I, then I hear JB screaming and crying with the door closed. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I'm thinking my husband uh, snatched him up and threw him in the bathroom. That's what I thought. So I got frustrated with both of them. I'm going back there ready to bust up on the door to, to whoop some tail. It's JB back there screaming and crying like he's two years old. I'm like, child, I got my hand. I gave him a few swaps on the, on the butt. <laughs> See, this is how you know you have a healthy relationship with your child when you can laugh about stuff later on but then i'm a type of person i discipline is not just tapping you on the butt I and mean, you talk to them so that you could correct that behavior <laughs> don't laugh jb so i pulled him i pulled him to the side gave him a hug girl i'm, I'm old school i i spank you then i hug you so i, I pulled him aside and gave him a hug and i was like why are you acting like this i want i wanted to know we talk. What what did you watch? So he told me what he watched. I said, JB. It was like about the swirly head. Man. Some swirly head. Something that he, you know. So I, I said, the look. Swirly head man. I told him, I said, look, baby, this is why it's really important that that is very it's really important that you be careful about what you watch. You know, as um as minute or mundane it may seem to us to go back to the bathroom to him he was very fearful about it he was very scared because of something that got in his head from looking at these ratchet videos so i said jb you can say a quick prayer you can call on jesus says jesus thank you jesus help me you can you can plead the blood of jesus i said just say the blood of jesus so we tried it right jb one in the back i put him in the bathroom <laughs> Child, he breathing heavy now. And so I heard him say, the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. So I, I walked back, walked by. I walked back, excuse me, and I, I went away. And I heard him say again, blood of Jesus. And so how did it make you feel, JB? Were you calm? You still had a little anxiety, right? But it calmed you down. Look, don't be afraid to, you know, introduce your children to prayers and stuff. This is a great age. Honestly, should have done it started last year. But I I prayed over JB before, but at this point he can learn how to pray for I have to try to wash his face some. Oh child, you sound like Dork Vader. <laughs> um, if JB's not up by like 720, I'm waking you up. Like you need to get up, you got stuff to do. <laughs> Like, I, you can't just be laying in bed all day. <laughs> um, but only because my baby goes to bed. I'm still, I don't say I'm strict. 
I'm just the type of person, and just parent, I think that kids should have a schedule. It's okay to go to bed late every now and then, like once or twice a year, but in our household, you need to be <laughs> by nine o'clock. <laughs> you need to be chicken choking, uh, Peppa Pig, whatever stuffed animals that you be sleeping with. You need to have them on your stinky armpits and go into bed. So, a bit of advice for those of you who are new parents, parents seeing young kids, keep up your schedule no matter what's going on in the world, what's going on in your lifestyle. Try to keep your kids on a schedule. It'll just, girl, his face is a mess. It'll just make your life easier. Um, and it's so funny, I watched Busby's Q&A with her husband. That's one of the things that she mentioned, because they have a lot of kids. One of the things that she mentioned that they do with their children, and because they have different ages, they do have to stagger their um, schedules as far as going to bed and getting ready. But, you know, we started early with JB too, to where, you know, we go to bed at this time. Because I still, the reason why I'm even mentioning this Mentioning this, excuse me, I still know of parents who kids are not on schedules as far as sleeping. Um, some of his friends, and one of his friends, who is also an only child, he still sleeps with his parents. Still sleeps in the bed with his parents, seven years, seven years old. Now, JB, I will say, Landon just turned seven. So while he was still sleeping with his parents, he was five. Um... Sorry, I had to wash his face off. And we, we're going to use some saline rinse for you, Jabby. JB. I almost call him Jabby. That's what other people call you. Hi, Jabby. <laughs> what a white people. Okay, Jabby, don't say that. <laughs> Jabby, don't say that. Don't talk. They're really new to me. Yeah, people who are new to you. That's right. Because Aunt, Aunt Nikki was calling you Jabby, too, at first. Anyway, y'all. We were out in Phoenix, basically. It's not even Phoenix. It's considered Glendale. There were so many people. We had to stop at the gasoline station because I had to pee. And I really, I, I'm not one of those type of people. I don't know who really likes to use public bathrooms. I do not. Who has a public bathroom like a bill right there? No, we ain't talking about that. Speaking. I don't like going to no, no type of public bathrooms at all, especially in this area. But I couldn't. I couldn't hold it. So... We run into the bathroom. Well, first of all, I'm like, the, like, what, like bathroom and pee all over here. I don't use urinals. So <laughs> I put my face mask on. Everybody, there were, put it like this, there was more people with no masks, with masks on, as opposed to having masks. Oh my God. So it's not going to get, stop it, JB. It's not going to get better here for a while because these people just are not caring. Um, I'm a type of person, I could be friends with you for years, but if you say something that is just absolute off the wall, put it, no, just put it like this. Off, off, off the wall, off the wall. Yeah, but down. Um, I have no patience for ignorance at this point in my life. I will cut you off. I told y'all this. I will cut you off and not have no regrets. JB, I will cut you off and have no regrets. So I've had to unfriend a few people. These anti, these are blatant anti-maskers. And these are people who don't provide any sources. They say, I read an article. Or people who just freely saying, I actually saw one friend say, we should have the choice whether or not to wear a mask. You shouldn't make us wear a mask. I'm gonna try to do a chit chat video. I have a hair video. That's why I look like um, that's why I look like the little house in the Perry right now. <laughs> do you even know what little house in the Perry is? Not really, but it sounds funny. <laughs> he said not really, but it sounds funny. I'm going to show you. Uh, now he's really going to start laughing when I show it to him. JB, you hear my stomach growling? A little house in the berry. Don't you? <laughs> now he's really laughing. You make me sick okay. now. You can see yourself, yeah? Kind of yeah. see yourself? Let me cough. And your ring pop. All right, you guys, we're in the back here. I'm having my breakfast. 
I'm having my breakfast and I'm gonna tell JB a story. Y'all, I do this every now and then. Yeah. Um, this is a girl, look at that collarbone glossman. Um, this is a part of me that's a little lie, 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 that's a little private that I'm showing, that I'm sharing, excuse me. I I write. I used to write poetry um yeah, while we're sitting here. Um uh, so I'm gonna mostly have JB in the camera in the view. I can I, I guess I can scoop my fluffy butt over. There we go. So JB, this story, well, I'm gonna give you the characters, the setting, so that we'll know what's going on, okay? So this story is, I wanna be looking at him, you guys. You can look at the camera. So this story is set in Savannah, Georgia. Georgia is in the South, okay? Savannah has a long Southern history, baby. Um, they have a beautiful, rich history. Savannah is a very beautiful city, okay? So character, the main character is a young woman. She's in her 20s. Her name is Jasmine, but her friends call her Mina. Okay? <laughs> Jasmine was raised by her parents. Excuse me. Jasmine was raised by her grandparents. Um, her parents died in a boating accident um, when she was a little girl. At the time, she was staying with, with families. And, and unfortunately, they perished on a boat with another couple. And they were never found. Um, yeah, I know, <laughs> a, little, a little dramatic, y'all, but you can handle it, right? I know my child can handle it. That's why I'm telling him this. So anyway, Mina is in her 20s. She was raised by her grandparents. She just moved out of their home. Um, it's been only a couple of months, so she's been living on, on her own for her first time in her first appoint, apartment. She has night classes. Um, she wants to become a lawyer one day, so she takes me back up. In order to cover her expenses at night, for, for um, school, Mina is a, she does tours for a, for an old plantation that is supposedly haunted. But Mina doesn't believe in ghosts. She doesn't believe in ghosts. Her, some of her friends and family members are completely shocked that she would agree to work on a plantation. Um, but she doesn't care. She has the mindset that she has, she wants to go to school. She has bills to pay. So she works at this plantation. So besides her, the other people on this plantation is Mr. Joe. Now Mr. Joe helps to um, run the grounds. He makes sure all the plants are taken care of. He makes, cause this is a big plantation. We're talking about a couple of acres of land. So Mr. Joe runs, you know, makes sure that everything is running. Um, the grounds are running. He also fixed anything inside the house. Now he has two, two young boys who work under him that he managed. Then you have Miss Louise. Miss Louise is very superstitious. She's an older woman from Honduras, okay? And so she cleans the house every week, weekly. But she only comes in during the daytime, early daytime. Oh, Jasmine. So Jasmine does three tours a day at the, at the plantation. The plantation is called the Wilson Plantation, okay? So she runs three tours. The tours are 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Where, where is the man going to come from? You're gonna get it. The tours run. The tours run nine o'clock. My axe is coming out. Nine o'clock, twelve o'clock, and two o'clock. All right. The tours are only an the hour axe long. Already came out. <laughs> the tours are only an hour long, right? Hour long. In between Whoa. there, baby, you can't have that on camera. Come what? on now. In between that, she. So in between. Special. In between that, she does other things to get ready for the next tour. She does a, she straightens up stuff. She covers the win the mirrors. Excuse me, before Miss Louise come in. But so let's get is to this it. in a mansion. Do, oh, he doesn't know what a plantation is. Bless his heart. So, baby, a plantation is a huge. Um, well, let's just call it an estate. It may include several houses. There's a main house. There could be a guest house. There could be housing, oh, yeah. you, get, you get it now. There could be fields where they would have people who work on the fields, slaves. You know what slaves are, right? Yeah. Slaves who were working on the fields. Um, oftentimes, unfortunately, they were punished on, on the plantation. Hey, did you know minions are based off the slaves? JB, you watch way too much. No, it's that's not true. That's a, that's a myth. So listen to me, okay? <laughs> the reason why some of Mina's friends and family are... Uh, worried about her working on there is that the Wilson's plantation is, didn't say that. the Wilson's plantation is supposedly haunted by Mr. Wilson and his wife their children and the old caretaker who mysteriously vanished <laughs> look at his face 
yeah the person who was before mr joe there was a person who was there before mr joe who 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 mysteriously vanished but the other people died during their time all right so but mina doesn't care mina makes really good money plus she gets tips so she's gonna keep working there till she's done with school she just got one more year left at school so that's a little background now let's start the story so mina wakes up one day you know before she starts her job at the plantation she's gonna stop by before she starts her job at the plantation she's gonna stop by and get some coffee i get it now i get it now so so is there a mirror mysteriously, mysteriously um, disappeared? No, you're gonna listen. Are you gonna listen? So before Mina goes to work, she stops by the local cafe to pick up some coffee I don't drink. and something to drink. As she waited, she noticed a man on the side of her, a very fair-skinned man, I that was kind of looking at her. She noticed a very fair skinned man looking at her and she kind of looks at him. He's not fair skinned. Fair skinned. She looks at his hair and she notices really blonde. He's actually an albino, okay? Any plot twists in this? We're gonna get there. Now I'm thinking of this, JB, I'm coming up the coming up with this story. That's why I'm fumbling around fumbling around. I'm coming up with this story as I'm telling you, okay? So Mina Harrop gets herself. She noticed him. She's like, well, I've never seen an albino in person, but okay, whatever gets her food jump in the car she goes ahead and tries to get to her work before her first tour right so while she's getting things ready she's dusting stuff so, so, i mean she's just arranging things they have little pamphlets for people to could take while they're on the tour on the, you know a map of the grounds all that so while she's t while she's scanning the tour the people who are coming for the first tour she notices the man in the coffee shop there he has on shades she's like okay he has on shades i guess he you know, it's you know, it's a small town. She doesn't live in Savannah, they live outside of Savannah. It's a small town, you know. You can run into people that you know. So she starts the tour. The tour starts maybe, in the Maybe but but she maybe she thought he was blind or something. Maybe. Maybe she thought he was blind. So she's like, Yeah. So she she starts the tour. You know, she, you know, starts the tour. The tour starts in the front of the house. Then they go upstairs to the house. There's certain areas that are all roped off. Like they can't go into the bathrooms. They can only go into one bedroom of the house. While she's doing while, while she's doing this tour, she noticed a man is kind of staring at her. Ooh. And during one point, he smiles at her, right? He smiles at her. So uh I mean, that's creep. I'm imagining it's creepy. Yeah, so they do the tour inside the house. They do a quick tour of the grounds. They do do everything. She shows the outside of the guest house. None none of the slave quarters are up anymore. They took all of, all of that away. They do a tour of a well, you know, that's supposedly um haunted too. There's a well in the grounds, an old well that's supposedly haunted. Whatever. She see Mr. Joe. Mr. Joe, like you know. Coraline. Yeah, like Cor oh yeah, like Cor She see Mr. Joe. He's out there doing something in the middle of the field. She's he said, Hi sugar. She says, Hi, Mr. Joe. I'm about done with this tour. <laughs> so she goes up. She sees, you know, the tour is about to end. She sees everyone packing up to leave. But then she sees the young man next to his car sitting there waving at her. And he kind of gestures for her to come over. So she's like, oh God, what does he want? Maybe he has additional questions. She doesn't know. So she walks towards him. He can, she could, she could feel him looking at her behind those sunglasses. So she takes her time, honey. Oh. She takes her time going over to him. And he's like, hey, I just want to let you know that I really enjoyed the tour. My name is, what can his name be? Mm. Hey, let me think of a name. Yeah, think of a name for him, JB. His name can be Quentin. Quentin? Quentin. Mm-hmm. Okay, Quentin. He said, I'm sorry to bother you. I know you're getting ready, you know, for your next tour, but I wanted to let you know that I really enjoyed your tour. My name is Quentin, by the way. She's like, hi, my name is Jasmine. You know, thank you for stopping by. Did you have any other questions or anything? He's like, yeah, I wanted to know a little bit more about the well. And she thought that was kind of interesting because typically when people have additional questions, it's about the bedrooms, the room, the house itself, or the guest house, not the well. So she's like, well, um, I don't have any, you know, I don't have a lot of else, you know, but Mr. Joe, he's been working here the longest. All maybe these you can. Are black in the story? All these people are black. <laughs> So she's like, well, maybe you could talk to Mr. Joe. I'll go get him for you. He's been working here the longest. Maybe he can answer your questions. So Quentin's like, that'll be good. I can wait here. Mm -mm. So Quentin thought that was odd. Another thing she noticed about him is that 
it's 90 like 90 91 outside and this man has on a full suit a suit hit all his arms are covered his bodies are covered everything he has on a suit he's completely covered is it and it's hot it's 91 degrees outside and he has on a suit granted it's a thin suit but she just thought it was very odd that he had on a suit so okay so she goes get mr joe she's like mr joe i'm sorry to bother you he's like what you want baby she's like, i'm sorry to bother you we have a visitor over there he has some questions about he has some questions about the old well mr joe eyes dart over to the man by the car he looks kind of sus he looks kind of suspect He's like, well, why, what type of questions did he have, Sugar? She's like, well, I don't know, Mr. Joe. You know, when you get time, when you're done with this, could you please, you know, go talk to him? So Mr. Joe makes his way over to Quentin, and uh, Jasmine goes ahead and starts to head off to, she starts to head off to the big house, right? All of a sudden, she hears yelling and screaming. It's Mr. Joe and the mysterious man, Quentin. Now, Mr. Joe said, now you get out of here. Um, Jasmine stops what she's doing and she see mr joe is visibly upset now the man quentin has gotten in his suv and he's gone now she see him headed up towards the road he's gone he's leaving the plantation she goes up to mr joe mr joe are you okay he's like hey baby yeah i'm okay i just that young man was here why why did you ask me to go talk to him she's like well i don't know mr joe he seemed pleasant i mean he didn't seem like he wanted anything what 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 happened yeah he started asking about the question he started asking about the well but then he started bringing up all of this stuff about voodoo and the old caretaker being in being in the witchcraft and voodoo and i told him we, we don't want that type of talk around here we, we we don't do that around here jasmine looked at mr joe she knew it was more to the story but now wasn't the time so you know, she patted him. She patted him on the back and said, "Okay, Mr. Joe." Well, the holy water, Jesus, the cross. <laughs> she said, "Okay, then, Mr. Joe. Um, I'll leave you alone. I'm sorry that happened to you." So, Jasmine goes on about her day. Um, the second tour and the third tour ends up well. It, you know, everything runs smoothly with those tours. So she goes ahead, packs up everything, says bye to Mr. Joe. And um, she leaves him the keys because he, he locks up everything for the big house. So she doesn't even have to do all that, okay? Because he sleeps on the actual grounds, Mr. Joe. But she noticed something very strange when she, she saw, she noticed something very strange. As she was leaving, she saw Mr. Joe looking at her. And then as she was getting to her car, she looked in her rear view mirror. She saw Mr. Joe standing down, looking down inside of the well. <laughs> And the two years she'd been working there, she never saw Mr. Joe act like that. That's it for this part of the story. You want more or that's it? Oh my God, I have to think of what to say, JB.